Juliana Pena is the biggest clown in the UFC right now, dude. And I'm sorry, man. I gotta make this video. I haven't made a video like this since I was talking about Israel Adesanya after he lost at UFC 281. So knowing knowing my, my trend here, I'm sure that Juliana Pena will KO Raquel Pennington in, one, in two rounds in her next fight. And unleash a fucking clip of arrows on her, bro. I don't know, dude. But I just wanted to make this video for a couple of reasons. Number one, because I think the stuff she's saying is absolutely ridiculous. Um, it's cringe as fuck. I know you guys have probably seen some of these quotes on Instagram already that she said about I'm be I'm the greatest I'm the greatest fighter in the world. I'm a warrior. Amanda's a fighter. I don't know what the fuck that means, dude. Sounds like some CTE society type shit. Like, I mean, hey, she probably you know, hey, listen, dude. You know, she's talking about fucking. I wanted to storm the cage, which is in the title here. And trust me, we will talk about that because, dude, shut the fuck up. Dude, you're not McGregor, bro. Um, but the reason I'm talking about this more than anything is because I know that the UFC, like John Anik and stuff, they like to call out Colby Covington. They like to talk shit about Colby, uh, who also plays a character, who also says crazy stuff in the media. And they like to call him out on that stuff. But I can guarantee right now, guarantee that not a single UFC employee will fucking say a word about this. I guarantee that not a single UFC employee will say anything about this fucking craziness, dude. And I wonder why that is. I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments down below. But I want to go into this video. I want to talk a little bit about some of the delusion that she's fucking having in this video, dude. So first things first, all right? I want to go to 428. Oh, mate. On the fucking money, dude. Uh, fuck. Fuck. There we go. I don't Best think that on I could have stayed in the fight. No. So this is when she was talking. That's good context, actually. She's talking about if she could have stayed in the fight because obviously UFC 289, she pulled out. Um, you know, she pulled out against Amanda Nunes and Irene Aldana stepped in. Had one of the best performances of her life. Let's be honest, dude. Um, Irene Aldana, shades of Yoel Romero in that performance. You know, shades of CM Punk in that performance. So really, really good uh, performance from Irene Aldana. Big respects, dude. Um, legit looked like she got her fucking controller unplugged. Um, but dude, this was Juliana Pena's thoughts on pulling out of that fight. So obviously a lot of fans were disappointed, I guess, um, in that main event. And Juliana Pena wanted it to be even worse. She wanted UFC 289 to be even worse for you guys, dude. Okay, if you're in, Ca if you're a Canadian, Juliana Pena fucked you up. She wanted you, she wanted you to get fucked over even worse, dude. This is her talking about pulling out of the fight. But if I would have waited like two weeks or something like that, then Irene and Rocky would have fought and I would have. So she's saying that if she waited, she could, because before this, she said, I pulled, like, as soon as I got injured, I basically told my camp and they pulled me out of the fight, right? Like, so they, they were pretty premature with it. They were ahead of it, which is a nice thing to do. It's a really good thing to do, honestly, especially in a division like Bantamweight, because she's right. I mean, the only p replacements you had were Pennington and Aldana, but she's saying, I wish I waited for that fight to happen, basically, so they couldn't step in. So that no one would have stepped in for this fight. Would have been able to hold on to to that fight because I doubt that they would have been able to find anybody. Right, that's what she's saying, right? So she's basically saying, if I waited, I wish I waited so that the UFC would have had to push me and Nunez back, so that no, so that there would be no main event, right? And I'm sure. Look, let's be honest. I'm not going to act like this is like a. She's ruining a great card. Like no one actually cared about her versus Nunez. Let's be honest. Um, but dude, basically she's saying I wanted to push this fight back. And I don't give a fuck about the fans, dude. I'm sure there were fans there who wanted to see Nunez. I'm sure they were probably the people that fucking broke that barrier, dude. Let's be honest. But, um, yeah, bro. But, dude, I'm sure there was people there who wanted to see Nunez fight. You know, I'm sure there's people there who wanted to see this fight. So, for you to basically say, I'm okay with pushing this fight back because everyone wants to see me versus Nunez. I wanted to hold on to that fight. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Like, we all, no one cares about this fight, first of all. But second of all, why are you going to make us wait, bro? Why are you going to fuck over the Canadian fans and try and, like, ruin the card even more? What? So we can get Benny versus Charles as the main event that ended in one round, right? And then what's the co-main event? Mike Malot as the co-main event of a pay-per-view. You're okay with that, Juliana Pena. So get the fuck out of here, dude. That's number one, bro. Now, I'm going to move on to a bit later in the interview, okay? Because... Um, this is just, this is just where the gimmick really just, it, it, it reaches its end. Okay. And so I just think that it, you know, when they want, she's talking about, you know, what did you think of Aldana's performance? You know, did you think Aldana was going to win? She basically said, no, you know, no one wanted to see Aldana fight, you know, 
passion, when they want fire, they call the right person, and that's the Pena Power. And unfortunately, yeah. I wasn't able to make it. So it wasn't one of these fights where I was like, this is the greatest fight. So she was saying, you know, oh, the Aldana Power, you know, oh, sorry, the Pena Power, you know, this is what everybody wants to see. This is why they called me, you know, this is what everybody really wants to see. George was sitting next to me. And then she's saying GSP was sitting next to her. Listen to this, dude. Listen to this fucking shit, dude. Listen to this, dude. So first of all, she's saying... When the UFC wants excitement, they call me. All right, cool, sure. And before her fight started, he was like, sorry, you gotta go. Like, you're not... So she's saying that GSP was sitting next to her and then he bounced before the main event. And he said he didn't really want to watch the main event, right? He's like, no, I came to watch you. And... Bro. So you're Juliana Pena. Street Beefs Atlantis Underwater Edition World Champion Juliana Pena. You're telling me that GSP... George St. Pierre was sitting there and he said, I'm leaving because I wanted to watch you fight. I wanted to watch you fight. And now that you're not fighting, I don't want to watch this fight. Okay, buddy. Yeah, sure, dude. Sure, man. Sure, bro. Yeah, that sounds like that fucking happened, dude. That sounds like GSP right there, dude. Dude, shut the fuck up. Yeah, bro. Mackenzie Dern just sent me three attachments, bro. I just didn't have the cameras on, bro. Like, what the fuck? Like, bro, stop fucking lying, dude. And let me address this now, bro. With the Pena Power gimmick, because she's pushing this whole narrative now. Oh, it's the Pena Power era. No one gives a fuck, dude. Um, but she basically, I the thing I mentioned at the start, right? The UFC loves to call out Colby Covington, but I guarantee nobody's going to call out Pena. And people are probably like, you know, oh, why is it okay for Colby to have a gimmick? And, you know, why can't Pena have a gimmick? Um... Colby's a dude, and he's funny. No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding okay? But, dude, Colby can actually fight. That's the reason. Colby can back it up. When you're sitting here telling me, oh, GSP didn't want to watch this fight because I wasn't in it. Oh, the UFC calls me when they need money fight, you know. Oh, you know, everyone wants to see me versus Nunez. Nobody wanted to see Nunez versus Aldana. Nobody gives a fuck about this belt because you're fighting for it, dude. You're the, you're the last champ before Nunez. That's why nobody gives a fuck about this division. Because you and Nunez are like Derek. It's like if Derek Brunson and Drickus Duplessis was for the title. We'd be like, fuck this division. Why do I care? They're both shit, dude. That's you. You are you are Drickus Duplessis and Derek Brunson. That's you, dude. You're you're the Derek Brunson of this division, except you're the fighting for the belt. So it's even worse, dude. That's why. That's why you don't get to have a game. That's why no one believes your trash talk. That's why it's cringe. When Kobe does it, Kobe's witty. Kobe's funny. Kobe can actually fight, dude. Kobe's actually a championship pound for pound level fighter, dude. Skill wise. Obviously, in terms of competition, he's not fighting anybody right now, but fuck me, man. That's why, dude. So don't act like GSP wanted to watch you fight, okay? I guarantee, dude, I guarantee GSP did not give a fuck about you, bro. God damn, dude. That's literally like a Flight Reacts level lie right there. She's literally literally pulling some Flight react shit, dude. And she's going to keep the delusions coming, bro, all right? Listen to this shit, dude. Listen to this shit, dude. This is the one you're all here for. Well, there was a part of me that really wanted to storm the cage. Storm the cage? What are you, a fucking Viking? What is this, the Northmen? What do you mean, storm the cage? What are you going to do? I want to hear this. And, like, oh. I had so many people that were like, yes, we'll do it with... Dude, so many people. Dude, it was Michael Chiesa, wasn't it? It was literally fucking Michael Chiesa standing there going fucking, yeah, I'll fucking tell you everything, like, drunk as fuck. Dude, don't lie, dude. You got so many people saying they will help you. What? Why... What, like, what are you talking about? I'm going to storm the cage. You're not fucking Brock Lesnar, dude. All right? I've seen you fight. I've seen you in the gym. You're not You're not that guy, bro. You literally... literally. Uh, did you guys see that video where the lady tries to j jump the barricade and get in the cage? And she gets fucking body slammed off the thing? That literally would have happened to Juliana Pena. Like, I can guarantee the security would have been like, who the fuck is that? And just thrown her off the thing, dude. Or she would have just face planted trying to get over the thing like Michael Chiesa, dude. Like, you're not McGregor, bro. What are you going to do to Amanda Nunes if you get to... The, say, you, say, you, say you have the athletic ability to clear this thing that you don't have. And then you fucking storm the cage past all these security guards. Which probably would go, who the fuck is this? And just throw you out, right? But say you get past all these guys. What the fuck are you going to do? Literally, what the fuck are you going to do? You're like, like, we saw you fight Amanda Nunes. What the fuck are you going to do to her, bro? Like, literally, what is this chick talking about, bro? Alright? So that that's 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 the main thing I want to talk about. This whole Stormy in the Cage thing. First of all, it's Amanda Nunes retirement. I know that we I clown Amanda Nunes. I just compared her to Derek Brunson. You know what I mean? I get it, dude. I compared her to Drickus Duplessis. I get it, dude. But still, this is her retirement, dude. 
Show some respect. Have some class, Julian. Okay, have some class, mate. All right. Let me move on to another uh, another funny moment in this shit. It, it, the question is, is Amanda Nunes scared of you? Because she said that Amanda Nunes retired because she's scared of her. All right. Let's let's hear this. Um, I was. Is she scared of you? Is the question. Say that you know, she she has what to the- earn her money. Dude, this is the most pathetic fucking thing I've ever seen, bro. Hold on, let me move this. Oh, shit, I didn't mean to move that. Uh, put that back here. Best editor on YouTube. First of all, Nunez looks like a fucking alien. All right, not gonna... Maybe GSP Maybe GSP didn't want to watch her fight, bro. He thought she was a fucking alien, dude. Shit, dude. <laughs> she looks like the Incredible Oak, okay? But is she scared of you? And she pulls up this photo. First, I have so many things... Dude, what the fuck are you doing? This is the creepiest fucking shit, and it's so cringe because, dude, first of all, ignoring the fact that you've printed out a photo of Amanda Nunes and you're holding it up like she's missing, okay, and you, that's your answer to, is she scared of you? The fact that you're a UFC champion, first of all, you didn't use ink, okay, you printed it, you printed it out in black and white, dude, get some fucking ink in your printer, alright, second of all, you didn't, you printed this portrait on fucking A4 paper and cut it in half. So you didn't even use a long way piece of paper to get a big photo you can just hold up straight away. Third of all, it's a fucking screenshot off your Android phone at 9.54pm. Like, go to fucking bed. What are you doing doing this? Um, like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Like, you, like, 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 try a little bit, dude. Like, what the fuck is this, man? And you think you're the money fight in the UFC and you're printing out fucking screenshots off your Android at 9.54pm in black and white. What the fuck, bro? <laughs> like, dude, oh my god. Alright, I'm gonna move on, man, because, yeah, this that's what I'm saying. This is just clownery. This is fuckery, bro. You're not Storm in the Cage. You're not fucking Brock Lesnar, alright? GSP didn't give a fuck about your fight, let's be honest, alright? The fans shouldn't have to wait for this fight. They don't care. Neither does Amanda Nunes because she knows that she whooped your fucking ass last fight, bro. And I think now this we're going to get into the section where she talks about Nunez, right? Because she this is her answer to, is she scared of you? Where she basically says, you know, oh, Amanda, look, this, look, look what I did to Amanda when she 50-42'd you. And you swung with your eyes closed and accidentally hit her eye. You know, good job, you know? But yeah, let me go, let me go a little bit later in this interview, bro, because this is where we get into the, the beef aspect of it, right? Because you can tell she doesn't like Nunez. I don't know why, but there's clearly beef between the two. I, do, I know Nunez started it. At the first press conference that she got owned, you know. But, dude, what the fuck? Let, 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 just listen to this. Listen to this altercation. Listen to this altercation. She literally thinks she's fucking Colby Covington, McGregor, like, Masvidal. Her like a picture and an autograph. So she's saying a fan came up to her for a picture and autograph in public. She's at an airport. And then she looks over and she sees and Amanda Nunes. And when I gave him the autograph, I looked up and she was standing. She was just- so she sees Amanda Nunes at the airport. What's going to happen, dude? You know, because, you know, Juliana Pena, this Viking conqueror who wanted almost stormed the cage at UFC 289 and would not have got bounced by fucking security in two seconds flat. She would have got in the cage and GSP was, was, high, was going to boost her over the railing to get in. Sitting right there with the big boot on. So Nunez and then, is there. Um, she was like clutching her daughter and her- Nunez clutching her, like she's scared of you. Like you're not fucking, this isn't Batman dude. You're not the fucking mugger from Batman. No one's clutching their children. Like, oh my God, Juliana Pena's around. Oh God, watch out dude. Don't, 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 don't act like Nunez is scared of you, bruh. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you fucking, you think, you actually think you're fucking Masvidal, bruh. No one's clutching their daughter in fear of you, bro. Because, like, what are you going to do? First of all, you're in public. What are you going to do? Why are you trying to fight Nunez everywhere else but the cage, dude? Um, but, like, what are you going to do to her? If you see her, in, oh, it's on sight when I see you. What are you going to do? Run at her with your fucking eyes closed like last time? Literally, like, like, why would Nunez be scared of you? Ge- genuinely. Like, at least with Colby Covington, when he talks about fucking Usman. We all know he's kidding. We all know it's a fucking character. But, I mean, at least there's highlights of him fucking up Usman. You know what I mean? At least he's he has the ability in his hands to rock Usman in both fights, you know? At least you can say, oh, I don't know, that, third, that second fight was a draw, you know? Oh, that first fight, he was winning, you know? Colby Covington has some kind of claim, at least. Colby Covington could do some damage. What are you going to do? You're going to run at this chick with your fucking eyes closed, bro. So, oh my god. This is the last one that I really want you guys to hear. Because this is the this is the ultimate cope, dude. She, like, this is this is beyond... this. I know this is a character, okay? I know she probably wants me to make this video. But it's just like... 
when you can poke this many holes in it and it's like you ain't gonna do shit you never did shit like you know you beat nunez but it was like the biggest upset ever and you got destroyed immediately the next fight with no success saying shit like this makes you look like a clown bro and this is the peak of the clownery uh submission finish so uh, in the first fight she got a submission finish big respects is more dominant than yep. any scorecard that you could could put in front of me a submission victory is more dominant than any scorecard you can put in front of you. Oh, yeah, what if I put this scorecard in front of you, buddy? 50-42. 50-43. Not a second of the fight that you won. Is that a good enough scorecard for you, Juliana? What the fuck are you talking about, bro? This is like the this is the type of shit you use when you play in basketball. And your team gets fucking waxed. Like, you get dropped off like fucking 11-3, bro. But you're like, hey, man, I dropped like three threes, though, bro. Hey, man. I hit some threes, bro. Hey, bro, I hit a layup, bro. Yo, I hit a cool block, man. You got waxed by fucking 40, dude. Like, you got waxed by fucking, like, 40 points. Talking about, yo, I dropped 20, bro. I dropped 20, bro. Bro, you got fucking owned. What do you mean that's more dominant, dude? You got dropped twice in that first fight as well. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? Nothing about your career and your fucking fights, especially against Amanda Nunes, that the only dominance is Amanda Nunes against you, bro. Even in that first fight, dude. Like, literally, what the fuck are you talking about, man? So, th this is what I wanted to talk about. I just wanted to hop on and just talk about the biggest clown I've seen in recent history, dude. Um, just the absolute delusion to act like you're Brock Lesnar or you're fucking Colby Covington or you're Masvidal or McGregor. And it's like, you never, you're never going to back this up, bro. You might lose to fucking Raquel Pennington, honestly. She might lose to Pennington, dude. You got submitted out bad by fucking Jermaine Durand to me, bro. Calm down. All right? So this is my thoughts on Juliana Pena, boys. Let me know what you think down below. Did you see this interview? What do you think of these quotes when you've heard them now? Um, did you like the video? Make sure you drop a like if you did. Make sure you subscribe, man. Go follow me on Instagram at Bedtime MMA because GSP actually just hit me up, bro. So um, make sure you go check out my story on Instagram. Thank you for all the support lately, boys. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.